So we're gonna break this one down pretty far to only five fragrances, okay? We're gonna be going over five fundamental men's fragrances that every guy should smell. And that is if you have an interest in fragrances or the fragrance community. And that's kind of what we're gonna be gearing towards here. Uh, people who are just getting started with the hobby and are wanting to kind of smell some of the top dogs. You know, just some fragrances that are gonna get talked about a lot. You wanna make sure you know what these smell like so that way when you hear someone talking about them, you kind of have that image or that smell in your head and you're like, okay, yeah, I know what they're talking about because I've smelled it. We've got maybe one or two random ones that you wouldn't normally think about in here just to kind of cover all of our bases, but a lot of these you will recognize. And again, we're trying to make it real easy. We're only going with five. This should go without saying, but there are many more than five fundamental fragrances for men. There are a lot out there. <laughs> You'll be busy trying to smell all of the main ones, but we're just gonna break it down for this one today. Uh, I will link all these fragrances I talk about down below in the video description. Let's get this one kicked off with the one and only niche fragrance in this video, and it's gonna be Carlisle. You're gonna hear this one talked about a lot, especially among the fragrance community, and more specifically, people who do dabble within kind of the niche side of things. This one has patchouli, vanilla, tonka bean, and nutmeg, kind of warm spice up top. Uh, Carlisle is a work of art. This stuff is, is something else. Oh man, it's just so, so good. Kind of smoky, uh, resinous in some way, sweet, um, spicy, and it has a little bit of an oriental feel. Really, really next level stuff. I mean, if you're someone who wants a niche fragrance, you want something with niche quality, niche performance, presentation, and uh, just a, a smell that is quite a bit above your typical cookie cutter designer release, this is one you should be looking into. Parfums de Marly, great niche brand. They've got a lot of stuff that's gonna be more entry level and more mass pleasing, but this one takes it up a notch. And also, as you're watching this video, this will be your last chance to get this one on sale for like just a little bit over $200 for a 4.2 ounce full presentation. If it's not out of stock already, hit the link down below, check to see if you could still get that deal. Um, today at midnight, the prices are gonna be going back up to where they were. I just thought I'd throw that in there. This stuff here is definitely worth checking out. I'm sure you've seen this one talk about a lot so far this summer, and it's gonna to continue to be that way for many, many years to come, and I'm perfectly fine with it. It's Aqua de Joe Profondo. So this is, uh, you know, kind of the flanker that is, is doing really well alongside Profumo. Now, this is not the latest flanker. We've had quite a few in between this and the latest, um, but it, it's one that is standing out. It has stood out ever since it was released. Orange, mineral notes, aquatic notes, or sea notes, whatever you wanna call it, are in here. Um, so it really does have a mineral smell, like oceanic rocks. You get a nice orange up top, the good aquatic notes, you know, the type of smell that's used in the original Aqua de Joe and pretty much across the entire line. It smells amazing, I love this stuff. Ever since I first got this one in, I'm like, okay, this here is gonna be a summer beast, and it definitely is. It really lights up and opens up in the heat. It smells the best outdoors in the summertime, although you can wear it really anytime you want. You're gonna smell clean and fresh, and you're also gonna hear people talk about this one all the time, especially like right now, as we're getting into the, the dead of summer. It's really gonna to continue to warm up as we go here, and this is the fragrance for that time, so it's good to know what this smells like. And it's also, frankly, just good to own a bottle and wear it because I would say most people are gonna love it. Now this one's kind of 100% random, uh, but it's really good. It's from a brand which typically falls into the cheapy category in some instances. It's Mont Blanc Emblem Absolu. So this one has pear, orange, honey, vetiver, fruits. It's very fruity, fruity and sweet, uh, but really, really nice. I like this one. I like it a lot. Um, again, I just described it right there, fruity and sweet. So if that's not your thing, then well, this isn't gonna be your thing and, and in that instance, uh, maybe you shouldn't blind buy it, but I'd still say, hey, maybe get your nose on it. You might like it, um, especially price points, not terrible on these. Uh, but the Emblem line is relatively popular. They all can be had just about anywhere for a good price. And Emblem Absolute really holds up kind of in the you know cooler months fall, moving into winter time, that sort of thing. If you want something with the sweetness, with kind of a fruity and almost fun and playful balance as well, 
this is one you should check out. Uh, concentration wise, it is an eau de toilette. Performance is decent, especially at the price point, I can't complain too much. Uh, but it is nice to know about this one. And I find myself gravitating towards it every now and then if I just want something that's kind of off the beaten path a little bit. All right, second to last fragrance already, we have Black XS by Paco Rabanne. So um, they've uh, went over a packaging change here. As you guys know, this is the 2018 release. Um, it used to come in a bottle that looked quite a bit different. Now, I don't know the difference between them. Frankly, it's probably not something to worry about too much. To track down and find those old style bottles, you're probably gonna be looking at 100 plus dollars on eBay, and that's on the more conservative side. I'm sure they're going for much more because that's how it goes when things are changed, right? And I'm not hating or complaining or whatever on people's hustle, but that's just how it is. I've spent a lot of money on trying to track down vintage stuff. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. Can't say for sure about this one, but what I can say is this right here smells really, really nice. It's got lemon, citruses, praline, cinnamon. So it's kind of citrusy up top with a tart, semi-sweet lemon, but then a bunch of sweetness comes in, um, almost moving in the gourmand direction, which I think is, is pretty cool. I really like the opening. The opening is awesome. I could smell the opening 10 times over. It's just a really nice combination. I love how the lemon immediately mixes with the sweeter notes in here. Uh, it's, it's just a really cool combination. Now, you know, in true Paco Rabanne fashion, it's gonna be a bit more juvenile, youthful, playful, whatever you wanna call it. So something to be aware of, but I mean, you gotta know black excess. I mean, this stuff has been around, it's been hyped. You gotta at least know it. Now, last up, I went ahead and threw this one in. Um, I don't know, do you see that? I think we're losing our lights here. It's storming outside or getting there. We might lose our power, I'm gonna hurry up. Uh, Narciso Rodriguez Blue Noir Parfum. Yeah, we're having issues down here. Um, all right, keep on track. I don't wanna lose my train of thought. Uh, this is a new release, okay? And so because it's a new release, it's something that hasn't been talked about. It's not like a, you know, a legendary fragrance yet. I think I can hear the thunder. You have to know that for me, I think this one is going to have a very successful life ahead of it. And the reason why is because it compares heavily to something like Dior Homme Intense and Valentino Womo Intense and Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum. It fits in with those really well, but still offers something different, which is crazy. You know what? It really does. But it smells, oh, it smells delicious. Iris, suede, tonka bean, musk, has that signature iris note, right? Dusty, powdery, not too sweet. If I had to compare it to any of those, it would be more so gentleman, EDP, but still fresher. It's gonna be the freshest of all of those sweet iris fragrances. Even though this one still does implement some sweetness, not nearly to that level. That puts this one in a really cool position where you could almost use this one springtime, spring, early summer, uh, early fall, whatever. Whereas with Gentleman, the Valentino, the Dior, you may be just thinking straight at fall and dead of winter because of how sweet they are. So it puts this one in a cool spot. And if this one is tied to three Hype Monster Iris fragrances, and if people start getting their hands on this one, I have a feeling it's gonna go over very well. And I think you should get this one and, and get to know it while you can, while it's a little bit of a hidden gem, uh, because uh, who knows, it's, it, it just may blow up. You can get this one for about $65 for 100 mil at the bottom link down below, bottom of the list here of the five. Highly recommend you do so, it's a no-brainer. One thing I do want to note with this one here is, you know, it's not gonna be, of course, nearly as fresh as the rest of the Blue Noir line. It really does stray away from the Blue Noir line a good amount, which is interesting, right? You, you wouldn't think that it's a part of that line when you smell all of them and then this one. Something I wanted to throw out there for you, this one is gonna be a good ways different from those. So if you're expecting something that's you know super similar to like Blue Noir Eau de Parfum, it's not gonna be it. It really does move away. Almost to the point where I'm surprised they didn't start up a new line. I mean, I get it. To start up a new line, it's gonna be new marketing. You, you know, you're kind of riding the the hype and the success of these other ones to push this next one, so I get it. But it is different enough, in my opinion, where they could have branched out and did something different. But I'm still super happy with it. It is a, a true parfum, at least I do believe so. And uh, definitely performs like one. Good performer, really nice scent. 
Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. Five fundamental fragrances every guy should smell at least once. All great stuff here and all will be linked down below in the description as well. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.